All right, everybody, do you know what time it is? It's yogurt time. Homemade yogurt making time. So I had gotten this as my starter, but like shortly after I got onto town because I expected to be getting back to my homemade yogurt making sooner. So as you can see, this expired a while ago. It tastes, it, well, I didn't taste it, but it smells fine. It looked fine. Mm, just smells like yogurt, plain yogurt, you know. So I'm going to try this out and hopefully it's like still alive and everything. Okay. So sometimes these tend to go sour because they keep fermenting. Is also part of why that due date can be a little bit sensitive. But, you know, if it's very alive, I'm fine with that. So hopefully it still works out all right. But anyways, I have to just dig this out of the drawer and wash and sanitize it. And it comes with a bunch of these little things. And this thing is under $40. There is like Luvelle or one of the other brands makes one that has a temperature setting um, that you can end up using it for making uh, different things a little bit better. Some people use these to make natto canais, things like that. I forgot to get a natto starter um, from the Asian market before I left. So, you know, I'm just gonna, well, maybe I'll just go for it. Okay. So this is not going to produce a really thick yogurt like what came out of here because that yogurt that came out of there has been strained and stuff. Okay, they've put it through extra processing. So it's going to end up being um, a kind of runny yogurt like what some people would think of as like kefir being like. And there are a couple of different kinds of like yogurt strains that you can even buy the cultures online and have them shipped to you. But I'm hoping this works out all right. You know, if it doesn't work out, it's going to be because my yogurt was no good anymore. Um, but I think it should still be alive. So it's not going to be like normal store-bought yogurt. At least, you know, I, I never strain my homemade yogurt, so it ends up being a little bit runny. One thing that I would sometimes do is to put granola in it the night before. And the granola starts to soak up a little bit of the extra moisture in the runnier yogurt and um because you can put like granola with dried fruit in there you don't even start to ferment just a little bit and you can add like a little bit of sugar to it and like little treats okay but this is like not rocket science oh i'm gonna end up just having to wipe my counter down again this is what's gonna have to happen probably now, you know, since this, like, is refrigerated milk, it's going to take a little while for this to work. But instead of using a bunch of these just little individual things, that it's like you don't hardly get anything out of that. I just, I had just gotten these from the store, these Tupperwares. Um, it seems like, sorry for the weird, oh, no, this is in the back of my car, so let's see. It's not quite popping down super well. Why is it being all weird for me? My goodness, I gotta actually set this down. What the hay is a block. I wonder if it's okay for me to put the lid on all the way or if I should leave it. I don't want bugs getting in there. I forget, it's been a while since I've actually done this, you guys. So I just put the whole Tupperware in there like that. And then I just kind of stick the lid on top like that. Okay, so then I'll end up with a whole Tupperware. And, you know, again, the microbes, people don't realize that, like, B12, it comes from microbes. It doesn't re really originate with the animal. It originates with the microbes in the animal. So kombucha is really high in B12. And microbes, when they eat different types of things, they digest it and turn it into other different nutrients. So you're going to get a different probiotic profile a little bit, like a different nutrient profile also, out of, like, a milk culture versus you know, a different kind of culture. And then there's different kinds of, you know, cultures that feed off of milk. So, you know, got to keep it diverse. But what I'm going to end up doing is um, I don't go through all of this for just coffee before it goes bad. Um, my green smoothies help me go through it. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be boosting the nutrient profile of my green smoothies a little bit, but instead of using just fresh milk, I'm going to be using my kind of like runny homemade yogurt stuff in my green smoothies with my ripe banana and just some frozen spinach or frozen chard, etc. Okay, so anyways, y'all, something you could check out. It's under $40.